Hello, Assalamualaikum everybody. Hope you're all safe, sound and healthy. And I'm back with some more updates and developments on what exactly is going on in Pakistan today. So, as we know, the establishment has been trying to have secret talks with the Imran Khan as they've realized their humongous failure uh, in their war with the citizens of Pakistan. And um, they first thought that they would try to uh, make Imran Khan uh, save their face by just formally um, asking for forgiveness for whatever happened on 9th May, which Imran Khan vehemently denied. And he's like, you're the ones who want to talk to me. Um, I don't have to listen to any of your conditions and I don't need to save your face, in other words. Obviously, he probably didn't say that in as many words as I'm saying it on his behalf. But anyway, that was the message that was given to the other side. And as things are getting worse and the uh, organizations, the human rights uh, organizations and the constitutional, um, uh, you could say the constitutional evaluation that has been going on by international organizations, they're beginning to sit up and uh, notice uh, the whole scenario in Pakistan. As one of the journalists, one of the Pakistani journalists pointed out uh, and his channel, on uh, social media, uh, Google. As we know, Google is a search in engine, a worldwide search engine, and they pride themselves on never getting things wrong. So, as per uh, you know, as, as per uh, their calendar of events, and as as per you know whatever needs to be what as per schedule, you can say, um, they had put the ballot box uh, sign against Pakistan showing that this was election year because constitutionally this is an election year in Pakistan. But then Google suddenly realized, hang on, Pakistan's constitution is already thrown out of the window. So we don't even know if there is going to be an election or not. So instead of being wrong, let's just remove it. So they actually removed that election year sign from their uh, site. Uh, which shows, I mean, it really shows that the world is aware of the fact that Pakistan is right now not even a constitutional country at the moment because the constitution has been thrown out the window by the same government that was planted by the U.S. Uh, a government and establishment. So here we are. Uh, now, the uncertainty of Pakistan is known to the whole world at the moment. And as I will again reiterate myself, why is it that nobody has withdrawn their attaches? Why is it nobody has closed down their embassies? Why is it nobody has declared Pakistan a danger to uh, visitations or immigration? So it's amazing. It's amazing. Again, as I said, for the smallest of things, when the world wanted to close down Pakistan, they, they had the smallest of excuses needed to call back their attaches, which they did once or twice a few countries, uh, just to exploit and manipulate Pakistan. But this time, this is basically them showing and confirming and verifying the fact that they are behind whatever is going on in Pakistan, which is why they are, uh, they have no intentions of removing their attaches or uh, their, uh, they have no intentions of closing down their embassies or consulates in Pakistan because they, are the ones behind whatever is going on in Pakistan and so they're showing their full support of whatever illegality uh, is taking place in Pakistan, the violation of constitution, the violation of the sanctity of law, the violation of the sovereignty of the state. These three major violations which is extremely important for America and the UK because with these violations can they take control of Pakistan. So back to now what else is being uh, cooked up in the mix. Uh, Major Adil uh, Raja uh, is quite famous as a YouTuber now, but actually obviously he was originally in the army. His father was also a major in the army, retired. And uh, now the thing about Major is that uh, he suddenly started speaking up for the rights of Pakistan and for the rights of the Pakistanis and for the constitution of Pakistan. He started voicing his thoughts on whatever is going on in Pakistan. And this is why he became obviously even more famous as he very openly voiced his concerns regarding what the army of Pakistan is doing and what the establishment is doing. And he very openly uh, criticized them. 
and this is why the government the illegal government of pakistan the pdm they decided to try to use brutal force um and they made a lot of uh, fabricated statements against him through their ministers and through their um concerned uh you could say members uh of the within the embassy and uh, within the, the parliament so that they could pressurize the british government to arrest him uh, to arrest him and send them send him back to pakistan now you need to understand that we have no extradition treaty with england we may be a commonwealth country we may have sort of some of these perks of being a commonwealth country but the extradition treaty is not one of those um so with the England when they tried this uh, the, the the police had no choice due to certain statements made but to detain uh, Adil Raja for a few hours just to question him and when they were sure that there was nothing to be found they released him so the rumor of him being arrested was totally false but as we know this is a journalistic thing that people do in yellow journalism where they want to always uh, make create high, uh, you know headlines so that they can you know uh, which now in social media terms has become clickbait basically so these are like clickbaits you know so that to force you to click on to see that oh my god what just happened and at the end it's nothing but rubbish to be read so that is it uh, at the end uh, he was uh, let go uh, and he made uh, you know he he confirmed it himself that yes he's free and that it was just a question uh, just a questioning session where he was interrogated and after that he was let go uh, which was also again confirmed by his lawyer as well because the lawyer in the beginning when he heard that this fabricated news of his client being arrested he was also quite surprised because in England you do not kidnap and arrest people unlike in Pakistan in England you have to follow protocols which means you have to get a warrant and then you have to uh, show the warrant to the person you are planning to arrest plus you have to show that warrant to the lawyer of that person planning to be uh, that you're planning to arrest and so the lawyer had heard nothing so the lawyer was like okay so i didn't get any news so where is this news coming from and then they found out that he was just um asked to come in for questioning that is it um secondly the, they have not only other uh, raja but they have tried uh, to do this with muit pirzada muit pirzada is already under police protection other raja in fact now has police protection from the british uh, because they realized that he actually is a victim and not a perpetrator and um, there are about four to five other journalists including sabr shakir and remember these are real journalists muit pirzada sabr shakir imran riaz khan um ashish sharif these were real journalists these are who we call actual professional journalists who have been in the field for a very long time now we have already lost uh, arshad sharif thanks to the cia and the isi's joint operation under the command of maryam nawaz uh, who again was under the command of the american establishment so we have already lost one real journalist and now we have about five others abroad who were forced to flee the country uh because they would not stop talking about the truth and they were harassed and they were not just harassed in Pakistan but they were harassed even in England i mean look at the audacity of the nawaz sharif's party that the people who are in england in the, are also conducting illegal activities right under the british government's nose and this is also something that one needs to question that how is it that that nawaz sharif uh has been conducting illegal activities right under the british government's nose and there is nobody to see or stop but suddenly they were very active when they needed to question adil raja this is one question from me which nobody can answer another question is that again if um uh, england was so concerned about terrorist activities and and somebody in their so- on their soil planning terrorist activities how is it that they never ever ever gave up mqms uh leader Mustafa Hussain to Pakistan uh, despite the fact that they, it was proven that he was not just a double agent but he was also a terrorist uh, and that he had used his political party for terrorism again it's because he was given refuge by the british royalty by the british government the crown and the crown has given such refuge to political uh, enemies of pakistan the traitors of pakistan because these are after all 
uh, going back to England to seek a ref refuge because they are essentially double agents that belong to England. I mean, this is the fact here. Um, MKM's leader, Adaf Hassan, is known to have been an agent of uh, Britain, a spy, a double agent. Nawar Sheep himself, too, has struck a deal with the Crown. Um, on the other hand, when Musharraf also uh, left, he went for England because he knew that there was no extradition treaty. And now the but now for the journalists, the suddenly the and, and for the YouTubers, suddenly the British police is very active. Suddenly they remember that they would not allow people to conduct terrorist activities on their soil. Seriously, you have been conducting terrorist activities in other countries using fifth columnists of those countries and then giving refuge to those uh, very fifth columnists when they come back. So you, there's no denying that this is a fact whether you would like it to be out in the open or hidden uh, in your closet. So uh, now, so as I said, our government has tried to uh, lay down charges against these uh, journalists like Moik Birzada and Sabra Shagir and three, four others uh, who are not necessarily in England, but some are in America, some are in Canada and some are in England. So. Uh, but obviously it's futile. It's futile because, first of all, as I just repeated myself like about 10 times, there is no extradition treaty with England. With America, I'm not so sure what the case is. Uh, because with America, it seems that uh, America likes to have an extradition treaty when it comes to getting their people out of Pakistan. But when it comes to re returning people to Pakistan, then suddenly their extradition treaty no longer exists. So I don't know what the status is with the Americans. Um, on the other hand, there is another development uh, here, and that is um, the mayoral elections. As I promised in the last episode, that after the elections, we would see what's what. And it was exactly as uh, was predicted, exactly as we expected. Um, we don't know if Karachi is actually serving as a litmus test for what is going to be the national elections and the provincial elections. But in any case, this was exactly as we expected and exactly as Zardari had announced. Zardari had already announced that whether there are elections or not, it is my people who are going to come into power and my son is eventually going to be the prime minister and I'm going to be controlling everything behind the scenes. So the Dawn spoke up and here we are because the Dawn just showed us what he meant by, uh, remember Karachi is already under the PPP, uh, Finally, Karachi managed to sever ties with the PPP and go with PTI, but it still couldn't do that because PPP did heavy massive rigging, as we all know. And PPP did has done it again, but except that this time what they did, as we know, they had already kidnapped 33 members of PTI. And jamaat e islami the other political party, which is an international organization as well, jamaat e islami uh, as once again, as we know, formed a coalition with PTI, which means if you're voting for Jamaat Islami, you're essentially voting for Imran Khan. And so Jamaat Islami actually secured the votes and they won the elections, but they were not allowed. Their votes were taken away from them. And uh, Murtaza, uh, I keep on forgetting the man's last name because to me he's not even worth remembering. But Murtaza is, is a person who is a member of the of a People's Party, but he is an unelected uh, member. Unelected means that, you know, you have to be a candidate who gets elected in order to then go on to work for the, uh, to in order to run the elections uh, or, you know, to, to go for the elections as a, a certain candidate. Now, he was not even elected and yet the, P the People's Party members, they all suddenly put their own votes in for him and said, okay, he's going to be the mayor. And they just stuck him there on the mayoral chair. Okay, so we have a violation of elections. We have a selected mayor. We already have a selected government. So why is everybody surprised? I don't know. PDM is a selected government. The Punjab caretaker government has long expired, but it's still sitting on our brains. Uh, Sin, the government, again, is a caretaker government that was long expired, but they are uh, the dawn of mafia. So we have two dawns, two, two uh, organizations, two crime organizations. We have the Nawashi's party and then we have the Zardari party. And they are both just basically dick measuring at the moment in which uh, so far uh, Zardari is passing in that. 
so he's showing that he has got a bigger longer dick especially when it comes to Karachi but we're not surprised but then he also showed that he had a longer dick when it comes to rigging elections in Bagh again we're not surprised because again in Kashmir PPP did have some hold before PTI took over so PTI is still the biggest party the biggest political party in Pakistan because as again as I said its members comprise of the people of Pakistan unlike these two uh, crime organizations and now here's another uh, small example or should I even call it a small example here's another huge example of how this government has basically defaulted the country even though they keep saying it's not defaulted but the defense minister has begged to defer and he has already called the the country uh, that it has defaulted. Um, so here is a good example of how de how the country has basically come to a default, and that is Shell. Yes, Shell, the petrol company that has been in Pakistan for 70 years. Um, they have said seven more than 70 years, basically almost as long as Pakistan is. So they have said that now they can no longer. Uh, stand uh, on their own and they are going to be selling their shares so that is the uh, that is the kind of loss that this giant company has faced that shell is basically selling out its shares i think the same thing is going for esco so remember remember i'll repeat here again remember that the gdp growth was increased all the way to six percent within three years of imran khan's tenure and then within one year of this illegal government stepping in, it has become 0.3%. Okay. Um, the IMF is basically breathing down our necks. But again, you know, the problem we have with IMF is you didn't give us the country the money. You gave these people the money. You take it from them because we're no longer responsible for all this bullshit. Okay. During Musharraf's time, we were never even in debt. Okay, who came and started bringing in debts? The American minions, the fifth columnists. Because if you want to destroy a country, the first way you can do it is, to, in order to put it in a state of default, is put it in a state of debt. And this is what they've been doing. Every single time they came, they accumulated debts. They just kept on accumulating debts. And in all those, uh, all those, all that money that they got, not a single cent was spent on the country. And everybody knows that. The whole world knows that. Even IMF knows that. So why the f frack should we be paying off IMF's debt and interest. IMF needs to get hold of these individuals, put them, slap them for a fraud case. And then, you know what? IMF needs to confiscate their private properties and it needs to get its money back. That's the only way it's going to get its money back because we are not responsible for them. And here's another thing. After the announcement of the budget, as we know, this was basically once again just a, a big smack in the face of the public of Pakistan where they're basically given no relief whatsoever despite the grand claims and here is a good example that was given by Saira Bano in her one of her interviews on the on ARY news and that is and here's a very good example of how they're cheating the people um, the pensions if you remember in one of my episodes I talked about pensions or maybe I didn't I've been talking about pensions for quite some time because the government has been thinking of ways to um, reduce and or um, completely remove pensions from government service uh, servants uh, retirement packages so in other words uh, they're thinking of completely withdrawing the the whole pension scheme okay for government servants um, now, right now, Radio Pakistan's uh, employees have not yet received their pensions for four months. Okay, it's been four months that they haven't yet received their pensions. And uh, suddenly the government, this, this PDM, this illegal government that we've got, that, that calls itself the legal true government of Pakistan, um, they suddenly announced that Radio Pakistan is not even a government organization that it came through uh, through an act or something. I mean, like, are you serious? It's called Radio Pakistan. It's, it is under the government. If it's not, then why were you adding taxes for, uh, for Radio Pakistan into our LESCO electricity bills? 
why did you make us pay for radio pakistan through our electricity bills explain that to us if it's not under the government okay and number 2 if it's not under the government then why were you making so much fuss about how radio pakistan was attacked allegedly by pti supporters uh during 9th may again it's not under the government right it's not a government organization as per your own words so why all that fuss i mean seriously who are you trying to uh, you know who ser- who are you trying to kid around at the, at this point who is it that you're trying to make a fool out of once again we need to refer to the gdp growth as an indicator of exactly what this government has been doing uh, in just one year um contrary to their claims um uh, if we again compare the gdp growth during imran khan's time he raised it up to 6% and right now we have 0.3% not only that do remember that right now we have the l- highest inflation in the history yes in the whole history of pakistan we have now the highest inflation rate ever again this all happened within one year and if this doesn't make you think about what exactly it is that this government has come to do with this country i don't know what does also pervez lahi finally gets to meet his wife um after the um uh, punjab government tried its level best to to not allow that for since the day he was illegally arrested and i will continue to say illegally arrested because this was an illegal arrest in any case no matter which way you see it as his wife has now for the first time ever appeared on uh, on you know on a channel or in the media to also talk about it uh, after finally meeting him her, the two main things that we get from her um appearance uh, and what she had to say the key points of of uh, her conversation or you could say her message that she was giving on his behalf was number 1 um despite the torture that he was put through in a c class jail and now their c class jail is basically an ordinary citizens uh jail cell which means that uh, you're treated just like an ordinary citizen and even despite the fact that he is in the c class jail he has not given any of the facilities that uh that a normal ordinary prisoner um gets and at the same time as we know he is after all as his wife has clearly mentioned again that he is after all 77 years old and not in good physical condition and because of the way they treated him in jail um she had to uh, even one day go all the way to the hospital because she was called in the middle of the night at around 1:30 a.m. or so uh, by the doctor who urgently needed his medical reports because he said that he is not in a good condition and i need to know what's going on so and the hospital that he was sent to was pic which we refer to as pic and this is obviously uh, one way or the other under the government and that is why he was taken to that hospital the doctor was um, in an urgent need of his medical reports so she went to the hospital uh, at that time of the the you know of uh, uh, the night and uh, she was still not allowed to see him and um be- before his tests could be completed um he was again taken away from the hospital and sent back to camp by camp we mean the jail site so he was sent back to prison and at the same time um when she tried to put in uh, an appeal for a visit um she was denied and then the second time when she went there she was stalled um they kept on making excuses uh thinking that she would get tired herself and leave but when she announced that she would stay all the way uh i mean up until they managed to get him down to meet her that she had no problems waiting even if it goes through the night and then they realized that okay she's going nowhere so then they very openly told her that we're sorry but we're not going to allow you to meet him this is why today when she finally got to meet him so she was relieved uh because she said although physically he is not very well but uh mentally she has never seen him 
as sharp and strong um basically she's talking about his faith uh, his faith in god and his faith in uh, you know in his stance so she according to her she has never seen him so determined and so uh so much with such strong faith ever before in his life and he says that so there's the key point now the key point here is um that he is still going to stick with Imran Khan and PTI and the second key the second key point uh that she needed to give out uh, uh that she needed to point out was the conditions in which the people are being kept in jail and she wants to know why we all want to know why why i mean as you said just somebody come and give me an answer i am here in front of you for the first time in my life i have come in front of the camera just to ask you people what exactly did he do that you have arrested him for give me a clear answer with clear evidence just tell me what it is and so that is what we are all asking but of course we 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 are asking because we already know what it is what it is is that they just want to torture every single person who is um a part of pti or who supports pti or he or who is a member of pti or a voter of pti they just want to torture everybody but that again as i said that means you're basically at war with the country itself because the country is with pti the public and again by the country i mean the public not you idiots who think that you are the owners of the state but the actual owners of the state which is we the public we are with pti so when you declare a war against pti or against imran khan you have actually declared a war against the people of pakistan now you need to see how that ends so now we basically have three major questions that we need to ask um both ourselves and the international forum number 1 are you going to sit up and actually do something about pakistan's certain individuals uh violating the constitution of the country violating international laws violating human rights violating uh, the sanctity of law is anybody in in the concerned international forums and platforms and organizations are they going to actually start doing something about it or not is australia really going to take steps towards sanctioning these individuals or not um the us government obviously has just shown its involvement in this whole scenario so has the uk government the fact that the uk government was uh, never ever ready to even interrogate nawaz sharif or altaf hussain despite the fact that there was huge evidence against them that they were wanted for treason as well as for uh, fraud embezzlement and as well as for terrorism and yet uh, when these when the illegal unelected government that is already expired uh, when this government of pakistan demands that they detain and question journalists and youtubers um with no real evidence except just written claims of them being involved in anti-state uh, activities and suddenly uh, england obliges them by uh, detaining uh, adil raja the youtuber uh, you know just to interrogate him seriously seriously is this how you're going to play it england you do realize that you're courting your own doom america and england really needs to real they both of them they really need to realize that they are courting their own doom they're courting their own death and it's coming very soon because the more you uh screw with the mass of any country uh the more you screw with the mass of your own country it really is as simple as that newton's law keep that in mind the law of physics okay so this is me signing out take care everybody ciao ciao for the office